Well, good morning. I want to share with you out of the letter of James. And James is probably one of the most misunderstood letters in the New Testament. But we, as we see James, we'll see that James was uh, someone that understood the faith, understood what the true work was, and understood what it means to continue in the perfect law of liberty. And the thing I want to read today is James chapter 3, and it talked about James almost de dedicates an entire chapter uh, about uh, the tongue, and which is an interesting thought here. And it, it really shows you what James was observing and James was seeing the fruit of those who were not continuing in the perfect law of liberty and it was coming out of their mouths, okay? Someone said, you know, if you want to know what a person really believes, just let them talk and they will tell you because your tongue will tell on you. Your cheating heart will tell on you. It's kind of interesting, isn't it? It'll come out of your mouth. But anyway, uh, James chapter 3, verse 2 says this, For we all stumble in many ways, in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word, that in his speech, he is a perfect man. And what I'm seeing here is that when you understand who you are in Christ, that you're complete in Christ, that you see your perfection is in Christ, and that uh, you have nothing to prove, that you know your, where your approval is, where your acceptance is. It's with God through Christ. And so you don't have to ever defend yourself. You don't have to ever prove yourself. You don't have to have to ever, uh, you know, uh, it's like tit for tat. If someone speaks evil against you, you don't have to try and get even with them. And I always said, if you wanna get even with someone, that means you have to come down on their level to get even. Okay, but if, and so the, James is saying here, it's because you believe uh, that you're a perfect man. That you begin to uh, speak words of life and not death, basically is what he's saying. And he says he's also able to bridle the whole body indeed. And then he says we put bits in the horse's mouths that they may obey us and we turn their whole body. And then he says look also at ships. <clears throat> Although they are so large and are driven by fierce winds, they're turned about by a very small rudder. Wherever the pilot desires, even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. The tongue. See how great a forest a little fire kindles. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature and is set on fire by hell. Interesting. It's set on fire by hell. If you look up the word hell, it really has to do with uh, someone that doesn't perceive or know uh, or understand uh, really the truth. It's, it's someone that's speaking from or believing some, a lie, basically. Believing a lie over the truth. And it begins to come out of their mouth. Then it says, For every kind of beast and bird of reptile and creature of the sea is tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But no man can tame the tongue. It's an unruly evil full of deadly poison. With it we bless our God and Father and with it we curse men who have been made in the very similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing. My brethren, even the uh, brethren, these things ought not to be so. Does a spring send forth fresh water and bitter from the same opening? Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Thus no spring yields both salt water and fresh. Then he says, Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in meekness of wisdom. Whose wisdom? God's wisdom. But if you have bitter envy, self-seeking, and this is all fruit of believing the wrong thing. See, self-seeking, bitter envy is a fruit of death and confusion. Every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is for pure, peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy, good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. This is what I want you to hear. 
you can never tame your tongue. You can never, by your own determination and self-willpower, ever tame your tongue. The only way that your tongue is tamed is when you believe what God believes about you. When you believe the gospel, when you believe that you have been forgiven, that your acceptance and approval come from God, that your life comes from nowhere but God through Christ. It's about what your heart is believing, right? As you believe in your heart, so it will come out of your mouth. So if things are coming out of your mouth, a fruit of death is coming out of your mouth, is because what you have not yet been persuaded in your heart to believe. Now I want you to, to hear uh, another one, that his name is Jesus. And it says, even when he was crucified to the cross, he opened not his mouth. Why did Jesus not open his mouth? Because what he had already believed in his heart. What had he believed in his heart? He believed the Father. Okay, and what the Father said, this is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. What Je the reason Jesus could be accused and slandered while being nailed to a cross and yet open not his mouth is because what he had already believed in his heart. Isaiah 53, 7-9 says, He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a, a lamb to the slaughter, and a sheep before his shearers. Silent. He was silent. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from the prison from judgment. And who will declare this generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living for the transgressions of my people. He was stricken. And they made him his grave with the wicked, but with the rich at his death, because he had done no violence, nor was any deceit found in his mouth. Over and over it says that he was afflicted, he was accused, he was slandered. Jesus, innocent, who had never done anything to anyone but love, and yet he opened his not his mouth. How was his tongue controlled? It, can, it was controlled by what Jesus already believed in his heart about the Father. He knew the Father. He knew the Father's acceptance, and he knew that his life did not come, nor his acceptance come from men, but it came from God, the Father. I hope this helps you. The way to control your tongue is to believe the gospel, believe that God's love for you, to believe that you are forgiven, believe that to continue, James is saying again, to continue in the perfect law of liberty, that you are who God says you are.